And thank you, Professor Tano, uh, for uh, the introduction of me. And uh, I'm also very to this very important uh, gathering. And Carl uh, is uh, 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 a long-time uh, collaborator uh, with me and also for the IPCC. He's currently the Vice Chair of Working Group 3. Working Group 3 deals with the uh, mitigation and response measures uh, for the climate change. Uh, let me report on 1.5. Uh, and then the, I will move on to the, um, some the knowledge gaps and need for research um, based upon the, uh, this latest report so that uh, we will be able to share uh, the, the agenda for future, future research uh, through this uh, presentation and dialogue. Uh, we uh, released the report uh, October last year, and uh, uh, our press people in the IPCC uh, told us that uh, it attracted enormous uh, uh, attention uh, from the media. Uh, there, the statistics show that uh, over 11,000 online and uh, print articles appeared on just two days of its uh, release, and uh, they said that it's unprecedented for the scientific communities to receive uh, this much of a uh, uh, media response. Uh, just very briefly, uh, what's in the uh, SR 1.5 uh, to uh, share with you uh, what's lacking also in this SR 1.5. Uh, the study found are now getting worse than uh, previously expected. Uh, those are the coral reef impacts on coral reefs and impacts on uh, biodiversity. The SR uh, disproportionately at higher risk on the current warming, which is about one degree uh, above the pre-industrial uh, levels. And those are the Arctic. Uh, dry lands and small island regions, and also the least developed countries, least developed regions. It found uh, between current warming and 1.5 degree warming, and then again 2.0 warming. In almost uh, every sector, uh, let me give you the sea level rise, the summer Arctic sea ice, water shortage, species loss and extinction, and crop yields reduction, and the human health, and also risks to all human systems. It also yeah. that a global warming around uh, between 1.5 and 2.0 uh, could trigger a um, instability in marine uh, ice sheet in Antarctica and uh, Greenland. Now, the, you know that uh, uh, such an instability will ultimately cause a multi-level rise in sea level you know, within the uh, next uh, several uh, uh, centuries. Now, avoid reduced emissions by about 45 percent uh, by 2030 and then uh, reaching to reaching the net zero of greenhouse gas emissions uh, by 2050. Now this trajectory will give us about uh, 66, uh, probability of 66% of achieving uh, or limiting the global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius. Now all these are very well known. You know this uh, pretty much already before I say this. And also these are the key uh, messages, findings uh, reported by the media, which was not well covered by the media and also which not which was not very much discussed uh, in various uh, uh, disciplines, is the cost. The SR 1.5, the cost of limiting only to 1.5 degrees is roughly three or four times uh, larger than the, um, the cost compared to the uh, 
uh, limiting the warming to 2.0 degrees. Now the cost of that uh, 2.0 degree limitation that was assessed during our last assessment, that was the uh, A known as the assessment five. Uh, report was released in uh, 2014. This, our study pointing out that, I quote, the literature pathway is limited and was not assessed in this report. Knowledge gaps remain in the integrated assessment of the economy-wide costs and benefits mitigation in line with pathways limiting warming to 1.5 degrees, unquote. I know I am in the community busy with the cost aspect of the uh, mitigation pathways. I also wonder uh, what would have been the uh, response from the media and also response from the policymakers that if we had been able to present a special report on 1.5 with cost information intact. Perhaps it might have been better able to bridging the science and action. Now, in terms of cost, our meeting two degrees assessed in the last assessment there was a three percent between three percent three percent and eleven percent consumption loss relative to business as usual in 2100 or one percent to four percent loss in consumption in 2013 that was the estimate of cost reported in our last assessment now in terms of growth rate that is, uh, con can be converted to a, something like a 0.06 percentage point reduction in the growth rate of business as usual, which was assumed to be about 3 percent per year for the rest of the century. 3 percent for the uh, GDP growth for the rest of the century was assumed to be at some sort of an upper bound. Now the usual question following this cost estimate is why, why then is mitigation action slow? In the which we experienced between 2014 and 2017, 16 or 17 I believe, and then Last year, it recorded the highest level in, uh, you know, we, we, we experienced. So, and also, for the first time in recent uh, records, it also reported that the uh, G20 funding of the coal-fired power plants increased uh, from the $17 billion in 2014 to $47 in uh, 2017. Clearly there's a lack of action and the lack of action is mostly attributed to the uh, investment and lack of a, uh, political will. We found the scientific uh, uh, knowledge based upon the latest assessment and we present the scientific findings to the world and to the policymakers and then we say that it's up to policymakers for actions. Now some policymakers respond, yes, we are planning uh, future course of action uh, for 2030 and for 2050. And other many other policy goals to pursue, certainly including uh, climate uh, goals. Now, in sum, emission is increasing, not decreasing. So, the question is, what is the This fact has to be a, a critical. And 
you all know that cost effective response outcomes. Now we We expect this cost effectiveness should be one of them, but we do not know yet its relative influence among the drivers determining the political will. So therefore, methods for action, especially when uh, you know we have uh, what we have claimed uh, accomplished. Uh, turns out to be uh, something uh, rather incomplete. So I believe that there is a scientific question to be answered political will. Now going back, the way that is the, uh, the mitigation cost is framed as a the difference between the business usual baseline and the mitigation pathway. It's not the way when they consider investment choices. You know, the BAU is, to them, BAU is one of many options uh, under consideration. We know and potential depends on how, how it's return when it compares with other investment opportunities under consideration. Now, clearly, we lack the information on the prior requirements in various national domains. As I said before, climate policy and cleared resources are limited. For example, if you read the latest uh, communique uh, from the G20, I believe still in the draft stage, but it somehow it was uh, made available through media. It says that this, this, this communicates says that with regard to the climate change, quote, we challenges including climate change, resource scarcity, air and marine pollution, marine plastic litter, biodiversity loss, and other environmental uh, issues, unquote. And this is not these are uh, concerned about, uh, they're concerned about, they indicate they're concerned about the financial the stability and the system, the finance, integrity of financial system and agricultural issues, energy security, digital economy, education, employment, trade and environment, health, etc. Climate change, one of these many concerns and this priority varies across the countries. The fact that very sensitive to the assumptions in the baseline over the rest of the century does not help much the policymakers to the this consideration of decisions regarding the climate investment, climate action. The hope I hope Assets trending, positive lock in, and other various externalities. This and the marginal cost of mitigation and price of carbon. Our 1.5 special report confirmed very clearly the need for action and second, accelerating the transitions. This tweet improved understanding of the feedback of climate damage on economic growth. It will assessment only if these advances you are doing, making advances in this area of research for relation between climate damage and economic growth are incorporated. This course will
which we do not have currently. As you the financial system is robust with this onset of rapid climate change impacts and policy shift toward zero carbon world. Therefore, the transactions integrated manner with rest of the, uh, the analytical issues in the climate uh, mitigation and response measures. This uh, special for analyzing, especially between the terrestrial and change, particularly from non-climate uh, effects. We also found that rapid urbanization, particularly uncertain disseminating from the lack of knowledge on the interaction between the mitigative and adaptive uh, adaptation uh, activities and disaster risk management and urban policy alleviation. In and transition adaptation metrics and a whole spectrum of behavioral changes. Let me regarding the uh, potential the scaling up and the diffusion of zero carbon technology in in between uh, this further uh, research. Related to this is the, the lack of knowledge about how to uh, uh, nurture uh, disruptive um, demand side innovations, uh, which will promise to make a uh, urban uh, system uh, much more sustainable. The regarding the transition, uh, I would like to say that, the, uh, that we need to understand more about uh, the social acceptability of this transition and also the distributional impacts of this transition and uh, the, the interaction with sectors, employment impact, and also the, the effect of non-state actors for leveraging the economy toward a 1.5 uh, pathways. And also finally, uh, socioeconomic transformation uh, with a governance aspect of transformation. Uh, to have a firm grip, uh, both scientifically as well as the, uh, the policy uh, arena. Uh, there's a very limit on what to measure and how to attribute outcome to adaptation, adaptation actions. Finally, systems, especially regarding what enables changes in behavior. I want to conclude climate change will be in our ongoing assessment report to be completed in three years. I, I anticipate that and hope that much of you Sixth assessment, especially energy resources, need a deeper understanding to produce an assessment worthy of policy consideration and action. Then, also need a deeper understanding to make the assessment holistic and integrative. Recent, at this point, recent advances in the empirical estimation of damage function look very promising. I salute the research community comprising the EAERE for great contribution to advancing science in this field. 
I, I also salute the leadership of EAERE for stewarding uh, this contribution. On behalf of our presidency, I say thank you to all of you for your contribution. In good direction for research. I think economists over focus on our own, which is of course the correct definition of cost, but it isn't the, the definition of cost that policymakers really face. And since we are talking to policymakers, we need to understand how also to think about the costs that they face. So I think we will just have time for one question. Um, Hurry up now. <laughs> that made everybody shy. Well, there's one person in the middle there. Can you shout? I think, the, uh, I think one cannot dis distinguish between the social acceptability and uh, cultural acceptability. And the point of this transition and whether uh, zero carbon policy and actions, uh, policy will be successful and actions will be undertaken, I think it will depend upon the, how the society will be able to handle these distributional consequences of transition, especially when, we, when you consider uh, the clear uh, changes in the energy system away from the fossil to non-fossil energy, non energy resources. It will have a tremendous con consequences for distributional aspects.